Well, hey everyone, how are you doing today? It's Simeon here back with you. I want to talk with you about another very interesting presentation I heard at the recent International UFO Congress. I was doing an interview at a Denver TV station a few days ago. The interviewer wanted to know what I thought was one of the most interesting things I learned at the conference. Well, I would have to say that it was my encounter with Richard Hoover, a former NASA astrobiologist who spent his career studying so-called extremophiles. These are small organisms that live in extreme places on our planet. You know, you find them in volcanic vents. You find them several miles below the rock surface of the Earth. You find them in boiling water and in all sorts of places that are extreme. That's why they're called extremophiles. You even find them, according to Richard, in nuclear, the inside chambers of nuclear reactors. They're that strong. Well, what's interested Richard all these years is would you find these extremophiles outside of the Earth? After all, if you can get these little organisms surviving in very extreme climates with very you know, cold temperatures, you know, you find them in frozen Arctic ice or in boiling water uh, and in volcanic vents, where wouldn't you find them? Well. Richard presented us with two very credible examples of what he says is proof of extraterrestrial life. And I'm going to just repeat that. This is proof that there is extraterrestrial life. The first example was a fossil, an alleged fossil, I'd have to say, because we didn't actually get to handle it. But what appears to be a crinoid fossil in one of the rocks that was examined by the 2004 Mars Opportunity rover that our NASA sent up to study Mars. And if you know anything about this story, this was something that was found in a rock that according to Richard looks exactly like a crinoid fossil that you would find on Earth. Crinoids are a type of undersea animal that have this kind of articulated skeletal structure to them. They're related to starfish and so forth. And a lot of them went extinct many years ago, but there's still some types that are on the Earth today. If you look at the fossil that was found in this rock, it looks exactly like the fossils that you'd find on Earth. In fact, Richard told me that if you saw one of these fossils, you'd have no doubt, you'd be 100% confident that this is actually a crinoid fossil. But apparently, what NASA decided to do was to grind it up with their rock abrasion tool, and it was gone within three and a half hours of it being discovered. Allegedly, what uh, NASA said is they wanted to find out if there was carbon in this fossil. Right? So they even recognized that this could have been a living organism, but they decided instead of just taking a small piece of it uh, to just completely grind it to smithereens and it was completely removed from the rock surface. So this is one example of where we do think there's good example of proof of simple life forms on another planet, proof of extraterrestrial life. The other example that Richard gave us, which I thought was so interesting, were these so-called microfossils that are found in meteorites that fall to Earth. Now these are not all meteorites, we're talking about the carbonaceous, carbon-based meteorites. And Richard showed us several examples, lots and lots of slides, of these little fossils, the microfossils, the diatoms, which are these little unicellular organisms that have silica shells and form beautiful symmetrical patterns when they kind of form colonies and kind of live together. They form these beautiful star-like shapes and circular shapes and so forth. Diatoms are very beautiful to look at. And different types of algae and bacteria that have been found in these fossils. Now Richard showed us examples of many different meteorites and the little fossils that he's found in these meteorites all over Earth. And again, this is more proof of extraterrestrial life because if you look at these fossils, these microfossils, they look exactly like what you would see, at least to my eye and to a very trained uh, scientist like Richard, they look exactly like the fossils that you find here on Earth. Now, Richard published papers on this in 1997, 2007, 2011, and NASA distanced themselves from him because they said there wasn't enough peer review by other scientists to conclude that this was, in fact, microfossils from um, you know, an extraterrestrial source. They didn't dispute that these were fossils, but what they claimed were that, they claimed that this, these were actually contaminants of maybe the researchers uh, 
you know, getting these little fossils into these meteorites, which sounds a little far-fetched to me, maybe to you too. I mean, some of these uh, animals went extinct a long time ago, so it's really hard to say how you'd actually get that contamination into the meteorites. Now, I think they're really stretching things a bit. Uh, they wanted peer review, but apparently when the magazines Nature and Science were approached to do some peer review after one of these papers was published, for example, in Journal of Cosmology, uh, Nature and Science said, we won't look at this evidence because we already know there is no evidence for extraterrestrial life. So I think we've got a bit of a catch-22 going on here. I think these two examples may constitute proof of extraterrestrial life, that we've already had it as uh, early as 2004, but the institutions, the scientific institutions that we sponsor and pay for you know, with our tax dollars and federal funding and so forth, for whatever reason, they simply don't want to look at the evidence. They would prefer to destroy it or to completely ignore it by not giving it the proper peer review. The only, you know, grounds you could say that this is not an extraterrestrial fossil is to say that it came from an earthly source. But as uh, Richard Hoover pointed out to us, living things on Earth contain sugars, they contain 20 amino acids, and these particular fossils didn't have any of that, which means they weren't contaminated by any earthly source. So I think we've got a bit of a cover-up going on here. It may not be a formal cover-up. It could be. It could just be that the people who work in these institutions don't feel comfortable with this topic and they don't want us to even discuss it. But if this is the case, then we've already found proof of extraterrestrial life and it's just that the, there's a lag time. This wouldn't be the first time this has happened before these institutions want to admit that something is going on. Uh, after all, Scientific American Magazine uh, claimed that the Wright brothers were a hoax two years after they had already been flying. So we know there are plenty of examples if you look throughout science where Data has been found, evidence exists, and the existing institutions simply don't want to look at it. I, I personally think that's what's going on here. But take a look at this link below. You can listen to Richard Hoover talking about it. Listen for yourself and see what you think. Make up your own mind, and I'd be glad to uh, hear your view on it. Okay, thanks uh, for listening. We'll talk to you soon, and take care for now. Bye.